Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us on this beautiful day. Sorry, I made a noise. <laughs> Thank you for joining us here today. I want to get our program started as soon as possible. So first, I would like to introduce you to Dr. Lori Solis uh, to provide the land acknowledgement. Lori Solis has been an author, archaeologist, and educator for over 20 years, 18 of which have been here at College of the Canyons as an instructor in our anthropology department. As an archaeologist, she worked with tribal groups throughout California. She is a former founding member of the Fernando Tantivium Band of, of Mission Indians Land Conservation or Conservancy and the author of several books on the California Indians, including Tantivium, People Who Face the Sun, Introduction to the Indians of California, and California's First People. Please help me introduce Lori. <laughs> Today as we gather together at the College of the Canyons, we as a campus community acknowledge the traditional territory of the Fernandino Tatavian Band of Mission Indians. Sorry. <laughs> the people who face the sun. We acknowledge with gratitude the traditional people who have stewarded this land through the generations. <laughs> Sorry. This acknowledgement heralds College of the Canyons as a campus community to act as allies of the indigenous community and stewards of the land we now inhabit. Thank you, Lori, for opening this up. That was absolutely beautiful, and thank you for your words. We are all excited to have you here with us today. We are here to open the Intercultural Center. Under the leadership of Dr. Diane Van Hook and Dr. Diane Fierro, many people have come together to create a safe space where each person is invited to be their authentic self, to question and debate norms of our society, and to gather to celebrate. Today, you will hear from many people, our students, our staff, our faculty, our community, all coming together to celebrate this center to help better our campus and to get us started I would like to introduce you to Dr. Adele Alonzo, our president of the Board of Trustees. Adele has a, oh, yes, you can, it's okay, you can do it, it's worth it. Adele has dedicated her career to the students of this valley, including College of the Canyons. She is a staunch a supporter of our students and, their meet, and meeting their requests. It is my honor to welcome Dr. Adele Alonzo to this podium. Good afternoon and welcome to all. This is a very, very special occasion. Um, as Jasmine said, I'm Dr. Adele Alonso and I'm honored to serve as president of the Board of Trustees of the Santa Clarita Community College District. It's my privilege to welcome you to College of the Canyons and I want to thank you for joining us here today as we celebrate the opening of the new Intercultural Center. This beautifully transformed space is so welcoming to our students and I am excited about the discussions, connections, and learning it will foster. As we get started with our program, I would like to acknowledge the dignitaries and special guests we have with us today, beginning with my fellow trustees, Ms. Joan McGregor, with many years of service to this college, and Mr. Chuck Lyon former faculty at COC. It is also my distinct privilege to acknowledge our chancellor of 35 years, Dr. Diane Van Hook, who, who we'll hear more from in a minute. I would also like to recognize our keynote speaker, Dr. Abdimalik, visiting executive educational excellence and equal employment opportunity programs with the California Community College Chancellor's Office at the statewide level. And also please give a warm welcome to our student speaker, Ms. Shiara Asbury. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> it's always nice to see you. Nice to see you. <laughs> We're pleased to have a number of local elected officials represented here today. So from the office of Senator Scott Wilk, please welcome Chris Huff. Representing Assemblywoman Pilar Chavo are Andrea Rosenthal and Andrew Caban. 
and Isabel Yarelian joins us from Supervisor Catherine Barker's office. We're privileged to have a number of highly regarded community members who serve on our Citizens Bond Oversight Committee, which oversees bond activity of both Measure E and Measure M, and I want to acknowledge those members who are with us today. If you are a member of the committee, would you please stand? I wasn't sure if you had RSVP. Um, please also join me in acknowledging the architecture and construction teams who made this facility a reality. From HPR Architecture, Rasmik Sarkisian. And Chalmers Construction Services, Ara Bagdasarian. Again, I thank you all for joining us to celebrate. This is truly a special event in the continued growth of this campus. And your being here with us today, so help us celebrate, makes it even more special. The reason we're building new buildings and enhancing our capacity to serve students is because we enjoy such strong support from our community. From voting to approve Measure E bond measure, to serving as advisory board members, to donating to our foundation, or volunteering your time, you enable us to accomplish so much more than we could do on our own. So on behalf of my fellow board members, please know how much we appreciate your dedication to College of the Canyons. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Alonzo. All right. As you can see, we have a long list of people who are supportive of our, of our Intercultural Center. It is with a great pleasure that I introduce you to Dr. Diane Van Hook, Chancellor of the Santa Clarita Community College District and President of College of the Canyons. Since 1972, Dr. Van Hook has established reputation for innovation, inclusion, collaboration, and raising the bar during her career as a higher education leader at the state and at the national level. As a graduate of the California Community College, Long Beach, but it's okay. You know, you get it. Dr. Van Hook, who is committed to creating outstanding educational opportunities for the benefit of everyone served by College of the Canyons. Dr. Van Hook supports our students by removing barriers and fostering education. She does this through the support of our Student Health and Wellness Center by providing over 2,400 students with access to receive mental health services in just one year a 14% increase. As we know, that is huge success here in our California Community Colleges. Over $145,000 in emergency relief grants, providing 96,000 hot meals to students, saving $5 million in textbook costs, and hosting 37 intercultural center events for the campus community to learn more about being culturally responsive. Passionate and ever committed to the development of people, Dr. Van Hook has invested much of herself into helping others achieve their highest potential. It's this drive that helps, the, helps to build relationships on and off campus throughout the state with community partners, as well as provide fuel for the, her spirit of collaboration that inspires others to work together to create endless possibilities. It is this desire to give back to COC that truly sets the college apart from other educational institutions, and it's instrumental in the leadership of Dr. Devan Hook in the past 35 years. As that community college graduate herself, Dr. Van Hook understands the importance of our mission and works diligently to provide those same opportunities to others. She is a builder of partnerships, people, and potential, and through her actions, not just words, she has demonstrated how much she cares for our college, our community, and by far our amazing students. As someone who starts with yes, she never gives up. It's my honor to introduce Dr. Diane Van Hook. Not that tall. <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, thank you for joining us today. The weather sure cooperated. Two hours ago, I'm in my office wondering if I should order the magic carpet or the wind surfer because the wind was out here blowing around and it just calmed down beautifully for this event. Um, it is a great event. It's a great day. Accessibility, affordability, opportunities, and potential. That's what community colleges 
commit to throughout the state of California. Today we gather here for a very special occasion, a celebration of unity and diversity as we officially open the doors to this long-awaited place. Today's celebration is a tribute to symbolize our dedication to supporting our campus community, staff, students, uh, and the surrounding community, and symbolizes a place where all voices are heard, they're included, and everyone and their cultures are celebrated for the rich resources and potential that they bring to the table and through the doors. As Ralph Waldo Emerson said, every great and commanding moment in the annals of the world is the triumph of somebody's enthusiasm and commitment. Each of us have the ability to be that change by bringing enthusiasm and commitment forward. If we can see it in our minds and we can believe that it's possible, those dreams start to form. So what about this dream? What began as a professional development LEAP project, our Leadership Excellence in Action program, um, was brought forward by the team then. Uh, Jess Love, Debbie Morlett, Anthony Morris, Flavio Mar Medina Martin, Cindy Stevens, and Preta Saxna. I'm so proud to recognize them under the mentorship of Jasmine Rice to bring forward the idea. Um, and this is how they started. This was their mission. With student success as central to our mission and equity as the foundation, it becomes imperative that we at College of the Canyons invest even more in serving people whose needs have not been fully addressed and whose opportunities have been limited. As an intercultural center, is a part of our commitment to change the structure which may have historically not invited all students in and left some disadvantaged students out. Our ICC serves as undeniable evidence of the college's commitment to diversity and inclusion. Dreams come true at College of the Canyons in every corner of this place every single day. They're imagined and designed here. The grand opening of the ICC is a place for all students to explore, engage, design, and do together. All people have the right to access quality higher education, and I am proud to stand with you who have made this center possible. And it hasn't been easy. The center was envisioned before the pandemic, and then we had a pandemic and then we kept having a pandemic, and then we kept having a pandemic. And just as we thought we were in the kind of clear, we even had a hurricane come through here. So I am absolutely convinced with earthquake, six recessions, multiple fires, pandemics, earthquake, and wind that has no end, that this place is an example of a magic carpet that was bound to get where it wanted to get. In a world that is so increasingly interconnected, understanding each other is not just a virtue, it's a necessity. This ICC is a place of hope, a place where we aspire to bridge the gaps that can divide. It's a place where students faculty and staff from all walks of life can come together, share their stories, learn from each other's experience, work to get barriers out of the way in creative and normal ways, and grow together as a community. This is going to be a place of learning where diversity is the strength and where unity and change is forward through mutual respect, through listening from the heart, and through understanding. It's also a place that is designed to house an array of equity-rooted programs and services um, where students can access research and resources and each other and work around issues related to equity, 
social justice and opportunity. Our goal as a college is to support that work through the mission of College of the Canyons and through our commitment to equity and advocacy. The best thing about this is it's a collaborative space. The ICC will inspire action and help people realize that working together, their impact can be greater than traveling that route alone. It serves as a space where students and staff can explore their own multifaceted identities, histories, experiences, fears, and mostly hopes where they can feel validated, build relationships, and be inspired. This is a place that is committed to inclusivity. I have had a wonderful opportunity in my career to be involved in working with a variety of what we would call disenfranchised or not mainstream groups from working to help Vietnam veterans figure out how to resume their lives when they came back from the war, to helping 5,000 Indo-Chinese refugees who landed at Santa Ana in one month. And my president let me know that they were now in my program of New Horizons uh, to help them find their grounding, um, integrate, get the support they need, and move forward to setting up women's centers when they weren't very popular um, back in the day. Um, and I was very blessed that I went to high school in Long Beach where all schools were integrated, inclusive, and interactive in the 60s because I learned about what people had in common, which was their hope for the future, their individual strengths, and their trust in working together. And I feel very blessed at that. Through all of what's gonna go on here, and it's gonna be very exciting, you're gonna hear about that in a little bit, we hope that the ICC becomes a place of inspiration and innovation, of possibilities, just like the humble beginnings that started from our LEAP Solution team. It's our hope that it will be a catalyst for personal growth and development beyond what we already do for students and our staff at College of the Canyons. We hope it will empower students to become leaders who champion equity and inclusion and diversity and make meaningful and lasting change as they move from College of the Canyons to their next place of grace and diversity. And we hope that the ICC will continue to create and nurture an environment that encourages and supports non-judgmental dialogue, exploration, and community engagement. COC has worked very hard to respond to this community's needs. COC has worked very hard to lead change, and not always comfortably, uh, to close equity and achievement gaps to step up when there is no support and provide that support. As we officially open the doors of the Intercultural Center, I invite you to embrace a new chapter in our history with hope and optimism and wildly diverse ideas and, and opportunities that we haven't, you know, knowledge doubles every 12 hours. So if you think you've got a good handle on all the good ideas, you need to take a nap and think again because there's a whole lot of discovery and opportunity and connectedness and dignity and regard out there. Let us share a moment of celebrating our differences, learning from one another, and working together to build the brightest future of all. Most importantly, let us commit to collectively creating a campus actually two campuses, Canyon Country as well, where individuals and communities thrive and pursue their dreams as their authentic selves, liberated of all oppressed systems. It's particularly joyful for me to be standing here today because I'm the one that used to call this place <laughs> the den of darkness. 
Now, why did I do that? Well, first of all, obviously it had no lights. Secondly, it was a wind tunnel and all of the brush and everything would grow through. It was very noisy and it was not a place where people would hang out. And now I got to tell you, I've come down here and hung out several times. Whenever I get a few free moments and need a little walk, I come, I have a favorite corner I sit in, uh, and, uh, and maybe I'll read and maybe I'll just think and maybe I'll just reminisce. Um, I want to thank you for joining all of us for this special occasion. It's, as COC is, a place of opportunity and potential, and I'm really passionate about it. And I know that many of the people who are involved beyond the elite team are going to um, be introduced. But um, I would be remiss if I did not recognize two people. First of all, Diane Fierro, who lives, breathes, and, excuse me, sweats this stuff. Uh, <clears throat> and by the way, not in there, because it has air conditioning now. It didn't used to have air conditioning. Um, and um, Jim Schrage, who, uh, who was um, flexible uh, in listening to the many different ideas and the many different locations and helped us set up an interim center a couple of years ago so we could get started. So I want to welcome all of you here. It's a beautiful day. Uh, and I want to thank you for what I know you will invest in the possibility of people in this place. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Dr. Ben Hook. Now, I have the honor of introducing Dr. Diane Fierro. She is our Deputy Chancellor and Chief Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Officer for our district. She has been with the district for 19 years, serving as the Assistant Superintendent, Vice President for Human Resources for 17 of those years. She is an advocate for inclusion, diversity, equity, accessibility, and anti-racism and sweats about that too. <laughs> she oversees our intercultural center, manages several different diversity related grants, chairs several related committees, and heads up many of our district wide initiatives. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Diane Vieira. I feel like I should clarify. Oh, thank you, Connor. Um, I'm not constantly sweaty. Um, <laughs> I do, I do, uh, I am always concerned in making sure that we're doing the very best work we can for our DEI programs, um, and so I do worry about the small details, so I think that's where that comes from. Um, thank you so much for being here. Um, it is a wonderful afternoon, wonderful weather. I'm so glad it's not too hot for everyone, and there's nice shade. Um, thank you for being here for our grand opening of our permanent intercult intercultural center. I want to go back even a little further than the LEAP team because I talked to Jasmine about this and where did this, the original, the kernel come from? And the first inkling of this amazing intercultural center began as an idea for a women's and multicultural center that was included in the 1718, so, I looked it up, sociology program review submitted by Pamela williams Paez, Katie Coleman, and Paul Wickline. I'm going to throw out a lot of names at you today. I just want you to prepare because there are a lot of people to thank. This does not happen without an incredible team behind us um, and with us and still with us even three years in. Then it was the Leap Solution team in the spring of 2018. <laughs> One of the lead members right there. <laughs> Very proud and uh, led by um, Flavio Medina Martin, Preta Saxena, Debbie Morlet, Anthony Morris, Cindy Stevens, and Jess Love. Soon after, a multicultural center team was formed led by Dr. Rise, which consisted of about 40 or 50 students, staff, faculty, and administrators. They attended biweekly meetings to assess what the center mission and purpose would be, as well as which program should live in a dedicated space. Then the murder of George Floyd occurred on May 25, 2020. This was a turning point for our community college system. We were devastated by what we witnessed, but we were also galvanized into action. Immediately, statements of commitment were made 
town halls were held, and a call to action was issued by our California Community College State Chancellor's Office. At this district, we took that charge very seriously. Even though we were in the midst of the darkest days of COVID-19 and much of the time working was spent remotely, Dr. Rise, Daylene Meiske, Flavio Medina Martin, as well as many faculty, staff, and administrators led the charge to establish our virtual multicultural center in November of 2020. That was a, a wonderful addition for our students, a place for them to gather, even though they were virtual at the time, and uh, that engagement uh, remains as one of our core focuses. Across our campuses, we engaged in several hundreds of hours of DEIA-related professional development, dialogues, town halls, podcasts, and surveys to our students about how to reach them best. With the support of Dr. Van Hook, we established a physical space on our campus with our interim center, interim multicultural center, on the north side of the cafeteria in February of 22, as our students started to return to campus looking for ways to connect. We were embedded in the student community and they were excited to engage with staff and each other while we awaited our permanent center. I want to thank the stalwart team of Flavio Medina Martin, Director of Diversity and Inclusion and the Intercultural Center, Brandon Ashford, Ciara Asbury, both DEIA liaisons, as well as Samantha McRae and Ryan Valenzuela Holguin, who were here with us in the interim center and now in the permanent center. They have been our backbone and our staff. Would you please stand and be recognized? <laughs> <laughs> Don't take out Dr. Bull, he's still got to talk. Uh, this is an, um, the amazing team that I am blessed to work with every day. They tirelessly come up with ideas for us to engage with students, employees, and the larger Santa Clarita Valley community. So what do intercultural centers do? We are very fortunate to have our beautiful center here on the Valencia campus, as well as a newly established center at our Canyon Country campus. We will be having a kickoff barbecue at the Canyon Country location in Quad One very soon to welcome everyone in. The intercultural centers focus on cultures coming together and learning from each other. The ICCs are centralized locations for our inclusion, diversity, equity, accessibility, and anti-racism, or IDEA, you'll hear that acronym come up later, district-wide efforts. The ICC strives to provide a welcoming, safe, and supportive learning environment that builds an inclusive community and values diversity. COC is a proud Hispanic serving institution with students from many backgrounds and with many unique lived experiences. While of course our center is open to all students, it is dedicated to supporting and celebrating our diverse students. The Intercultural Center serves as a place to share and communicate while focusing on the experiences of diverse groups, a center for active learning with about other cultures, lived experiences, and intersectionality, a high-tech and dynamic learning space with deliberate programming and opportunities to support all of COC with the goal of increased engagement, retention, persistence, and success of our diverse students, a source of in initiating and strengthening internal district and external community partnerships, a place to host workshops, events, meetings, open study space, counseling services, student service referrals, as well as trainings for the college staff and community groups. A place for advocacy, program support, district resources, cross-functional district collaborations, and a focus on student engagement. It also is the home for our Undocumented Resources Center, our LGBTQ Plus Center, our Native American Student Support and Success Program, and our 10 Alliance Groups. A word about our Undocumented Resource Center. It was established in 2021. The URC mission is to provide a safe, supportive, and inclusive space for all undocumented AB 540, DACA, TPS, out-of-status, asylum-seeking, and immigrant students at College of the Canyons, as well as where, raise awareness within the district community. The URC's intention is to meet the needs of students in pursuit of their academic and career goals. We are committed to providing undocumented students access in resources uh, in resources such as financial aid, free legal services, counseling, mental health and wellness referrals, district services, book vouchers, subsidy cards, and health information from both within COC and with our community partners. While I carry the title of Chief Diversity Officer, everyone knows you cannot, nor should you, do this work alone. 
It was Coretta Scott King who said, the greatness of a community is most accurately measured by the com compassionate action of its members. These are countless, there are countless people on our campuses who are passionate about IDEA efforts. The broad number of faculty, staff, and students who have given of their time is impressive and speaks volumes about how much our district community cares about these issues. We have several groups that plan this work. They include our Institutional Effectiveness and Institutional Excellence Group, which is focused on student equity and achievement, as well as our Vision for Success Goals, which is chaired by Daylene Meiske. Our Center for Teaching and Learning, which is focused on training faculty and making them the very best they can be. Hi, Julie. It's chaired by Julie Johnson, history faculty, and Robert Wanzer, sociology faculty. Our Equity-Minded Practitioners Group, Equity from an Instructional Perspective, chaired by Katie Coleman, Sociology Faculty. Equal Employment Opportunity Advisory Committee, which is focused on our EEO plan, chaired by Dr. Ryan Medlin. Our Call to Action Coalition, now known as the IDEA Coalition, which is a cross-functional group that ensured the completion of our Call to Action goals from the State Chancellor's Office, and now provides input to IDEA programming, and is in the process of developing our District Diversity Plan and Scorecard. I am honored to chair this group. The Cultural Diversity Advancement Team coordinates district-wide events uh, from several groups on campus so that we don't have three events in one week and then nothing for three weeks. Um, we have our student government, our intercultural center, our alliances, our international students program, modern, language, modern languages, civic engagement, our basic needs center, our dreamers task force, our art gallery, our library, and Flavio and I chair that together. Our intercultural center committee, which plans for the programming for the inter intercultural center, as well as training and event offerings. Our Dreamers Task Force, which is obviously a focus on our undocumented students and their needs. We have a tri-chair model of Marilyn Jimenez, Hernan, uh, Ramirez, and Hernan Ramirez, and Flavio Medina Martin. Our Anti-Racism Speaker Series group, plan for, they plan for diverse speaker events and book series that is chaired by P Pamela williams Pias, sociology faculty, and Angelique Francois, English faculty. We have partnered with many community groups, including Queer SCV, the Coalition for Humane Immigration Rights, known as CHURLA, Central American Resource Center, known as CARASEN, SCV, uh, NAACP, welcome Valerie, our local president, chapter president, uh, SCV Child and Family and Domestic Violence Center, and we look forward to partnering with many more. I want to personally thank Dr. Diane Van Hook, who has championed this center into existence. Our board of trustees, our colleagues on executive cabinet, faculty and staff, some of which I've already mentioned, as well as others who serve key roles and partner with us on efforts still to this day, such as Academic Senate President David Andrus, Tricia George, Curriculum Chair, Aileen Terizian, Jonathan Ng, Anthony Morris, Christina Chung, Haven Warner, Juan Burriel, S.B. Tucker, Aaron Delaney, Michael Felix, and Stephanie Meredith. Administrators such as Ryan Thule, Omar Torres, Leslie Carr, Miranda Zamudio, James glapa Grossflag, Wendy Trujillo, Jai Chang Levine, and our classified Senate members and partners, Michael Mansour, Andrea Varney, Maria Sanchez, Joanna Kelly, Lisette Godinas, Juan Renteria, Marilyn Jimenez, and Cheryl Bim. A shout out, a shout out to our outreach office and the amazing work of our district peer leaders who make a deliberate effort to include ICC as part of their tours. I want to also thank our incredible student leaders in our ASG, our Associated Student Government, especially our last two ASG presidents, Gab uh, Abigail Royster and Colin Schneer, and those students who volunteered their input and expertise into making our center responsive to student needs. It is based on generosity from the Board of Governors and through the State Chancellor's Office that we've been able to establish and run this amazing center. Fueled by student equity and re-engagement funds, we have been able to launch our centers. In addition, we've received grants from our, for our Native American Student Support and Success Program, and we were able to hire the amazing Lori Solis, who is here with us, as our program manager. For our Undocumented Resource Center, those funds are essential in supporting our undocumented students and enabling us to hire Melody Klingenfuss. I know she's here somewhere. There she is. She hasn't even started yet, but here she is. This is the dedication. <laughs> uh, supported us in our, our program. She'll be starting with us on the 25th of September. We're very excited for both of these programs and all of the programs we run in the Intercultural Center and support they provide to students across our campuses. 
I want to thank Dr. Abdul-Malik Bull, visiting Executive Educational Excellence and Equal Employment Opportunity Programs, and Dr. Siria Martinez, Assistant Vice Chancellor, Student Equity and Success, both from the State Chancellor's Office for coming today and being with us, not only as representatives of the Chancellor's Office, but also as friends. And we appreciate them so much for being here. For this beautiful showplace of a center, I want to thank Jim Schrage, Aaron Tag, and Jason Munoz, as well as the architects at KBZ and Fonder Solari Construction Management Company. Thank you to our amazing Civic Center team, including Shelly Lewis, Rick Lopez, and Lole Takapu, our magnificent maintenance team, and our fantastic facilities team. This space was truly transformed. I want to thank the business services team for helping us outfit the beautiful space with welcoming, comfortable furniture and graphics for coming up with our creative wall wrap uh, featuring our wonderfully diverse students and printing all of our marketing materials for all our events, past and future. I'm just putting that out there. <laughs> we have a lot of flyers. Um, it serves as inspiration to our students in the center. Our fantastic IT staff, especially Jim Temple, B. Fan, Peter Hernandez, Chris Maldonado, and the entire IT family who have made this center a high-tech wonderland with four recessed projectors and screens and programmable monitors both inside and out the outside the center. A special thank you to Lole Takapu, I don't know if he's here, but you can share this with him, who caught me walking into my office one day and said, hey, the IQ's getting new furniture. Would you like their old furniture? I said, yes, we would love it. So all of the wooden tables and uh, red padded chairs in there uh, have provide a really wonderful, wonderful opportunity for our students and I really appreciate his thoughtfulness. I am truly blessed to work with so many dedicated people every day. I'm passionate about the work we do here at COC to support IDEA programming. It is important to remember that when you put, do something new and you push the envelope, you might run into a little glue. This work can be challenging but it's also incredibly inspiring and fulfilling. There is nothing better than hearing from students, I found my community here, or this place makes me feel like COC cares about me. That makes everything worth it. We sincerely thank you for being here as we celebrate our amazing Intercultural Center. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Fierro. As you can see, there are many people who came together to support this center. I now have the privilege of introducing Dr. Abmalik Bull, who is currently serving a two-year visiting executive of Educational Excellence and Equal, Opportun Equal Employment Opportunity, that's a lot of L's, um, <laughs> programs role at the California Community College Chancellor's Office. During his tenure, he, ha he has and continues to assist in ensuring equal op employment opportunity, op let me start that over. Ensuring equal employment opportunities and initiatives are connected to the classroom for the largest system of higher education in the nation, comprised of over 116 colleges. He is also an award-winning professor, anti-racist activist, and emancipatory educator. Known as an international keynote speaker and innovative dynamic leader from Africa to the U.S., he shares his message of empathy and love baked in courage and conviction. He completed his bachelor's degree in sociology and a master's degree in education with an emphasis in community-based counseling and social justice, both from San Diego State University. He completed his doctorate work in educational leadership with an emphasis in educational psychology from the University of Southern California. Dr. Bull is also a lecturer at San Diego State University where he teaches restorative practices and conflict transformation to students in the Advanced Graduate Certificate in Mental Health Recovery and Trauma-Informed Care Master's Degree in Education with concentration in a counseling program. He co-chairs the statewide Equal Employment Opportunity Diversity Action Committee and oversaw its deployment of the 2022 EEO Best Practices Handbook and the 2023 10-point plan to diversify faculty. Under his leadership, he crafted a funding allocation for $20 million in EEO funding to improve hiring practices. His most important role and title in life is being that proud father to his five-year-old daughter, Salma, and, his, and being married to Saudi Fursuti for 10 years. Welcome to the podium.
Thank you for that uh, warm introduction, Doctor. Can we get up for Doctor Jasmine Rice? Who did a phenomenal job emceeing? I would be remiss if I didn't take the phenomenal Diane squad here. Um, <laughs> Dr. Diane Van Hook and Dr. Diane Field, thank you for the invitation. And I want to acknowledge if she can stand up. Uh, my peanut butter to my jelly when it comes to the work uh, of the State Chancellor's Office, Dr. Cydia Martinez. So this might come as a surprise to many, but I, I don't have a pre-planned speech. Uh, I just kind of walk around, get a vibe, and let the spirit take me where I flow. And so I want to piggyback off of something that Dr. Van Hook said. And as we're going through our tour and talking about what the center used to be, she mentioned and she called this place the den of darkness. And today we're here and going to cut the ribbon on what we view in the vision of something that became the hallway of hope. The hallway of hope, when I think about that transformation, I think about the meaning of culture. What is the essence of being here? And many of you are students, faculty members, classified professionals, community members, elected officials. Culture is not static, it's always moving. This itself is a culture that the College of the Canyons is establishing. A culture that is no longer acceptable just to have a sense of belonging, but to actually be, to belong, to be the fabric of this institution. That all of our identities matter. That every single person, no matter what your background is, you bring some type of nutrient, some type of value to this institution. And that is going to be affirmed, not in the space, but the vibrations that come from this space as you emanate, as you walk through this campus, as you get to be your authentic self. See, culture moves and it grooves. It, it transforms from generation to generation. It's transferred in language and food and clothes and interaction. And so it's becoming and befitting to call it the intercultural center. No space better to have that than an educational setting. Because knowledge is one thing. You can keep it, you can store it, you can share it. But applying it is learning. And learning is the foundation of our educational institutions. And so now we have an opportunity to engage one another, to engage various cultures, to do three A's, to affirm, to acknowledge, and to accept. To affirm our humanity, to our dignity, to our shared experiences, that we all come from different places and different aspects of our lives that have shaped us to who become who we are today, but we affirm our humanity, that we see you, in Africa, we say, Sawabona, I see you. You are affirmed in the space. To acknowledge one another. And we have different ways of acknowledging one another, right? Sometimes that traditional head nod, like. <laughs> or it could be a down one, like, hey, you know, some more professional one, I see you. But we, we acknowledge one another. And then ultimately, now we're saying we can affirm and acknowledge one another across the campus, but let's accept who we are. And let's not tolerate who we are. Let's accept who we are. And that is the intercultural piece that requires that exchange of who we are. I always go back to these four abilities that we have. We have these four superpowers that every single human being, no matter who you are, and what your capabilities are we have. Our first is our availability, to avail ourselves. They say your best ability is what? Louder, your best ability is what? Availability. You ain't available, if I can't pick up the phone, 
Dr. Dan Field hit me with an email and said, can you slide through? I said, I'm going to be available. Your best ability is available, to be available to one another. So as we enter this space, I want us to avail ourselves to one another. To think about the benefits, the cultural nutrients and values that you bring that's an asset to this space and to this community. We affirm the indigenous people's land that we're upon. I want you to affirm the cultural experiences that you bring, more than just sharing the food and breaking bread, but to transfer that love. And going back to the den of darkness, reminds me of that MLK quote, that darkness cannot drive out darkness. And that hate cannot drive out hate, but it is love. And in that, as we're exchanging culture, we do it in a, in a way that is loving, that requires empathy, that requires care, that requires diligence and understanding and sensitivity. That is what it means to be culturally responsive. That yes, I'm gonna have some ooch and ouch moments, right? We may have a crabs in a barrel effect, but sometimes we have to analyze what is the purpose of the barrel. The crab knows what's gonna happen to them, that's what they're trying to get out. They know they're gonna be dinner. <laughs> fighting for resources, fighting one against one another, right? We have to analyze the barrel. And today we have the hallway of hope here that was transformed from the vision, which is my second ability that we all have, which is responsibility. We have a responsibility to one another, to each other, to the legacies that we come from and the legacies that we want to establish. To be responsible stewards of our culture that we hope to impart and to transfer and to share. And that requires you to walk upon this earth, walk upon this campus, walk upon this space with a certain level of love, empathy, but confidence in who you are. And emanate and share that beauty and love, which is the third ability that we all have, accountability. We're going to have ooch and ouch moments. How can we call each other in and not call each other out? Foundational aspects of culture. One from availability, responsibility, accountability, and the fourth one is vulnerability. If you want people to be in their authentic selves, in their raw, pure way of being, not having to compromise their culture or themselves or share being who they are, requires a little bit of vulnerability. And this requires us to open up a little bit, break bread, share, understand, know that you don't know it all, humble yourself, humility, also offer grace. These are tangible characteristics that enhance and allow us to continuously transfer culture and continue to create new culture as we come together. There's also three L's. And this is something that when I look to my right, I see Flavio and I just can't always seem to smile but to smile, listen, learn, and leverage. Listen to one another. Listening is different than hearing. We all have senses. And we use them different. Listening, I mean, the same organs, same ears. Some people say, I hear you. Yeah, I heard what you said. Listening is different. That requires your heart and your mind. Not only did I hear what you said, now I'm listening to you. It's opening up my mind, it's opening up my heart. I'm able to process and maybe act upon that. Listen to one another as you exchange culture. As you interact with one another. As you affirm and acknowledge and accept each other. We also want to be folks that use our hands and our senses much different. Some of us are touchers. Some of us are feelers. Touching is different than feeling. Now I know, you know, I'm not, I'm not gonna go Title IX on you. <laughs> not that type of touching, right? 
But when you hug someone and they say, I feel you, it's much different. You can touch, high five, hug, there's nothing there. But you hug, you embrace somebody and you say, you can feel there's a certain level of energy that flows there. I want us to feel one another, not just touch one another. I want us to listen to one another, not just hear one another. That is the way we transfer culture. That we adopt new ways of learning and being. That we let folks be their authentic selves and blossom into the greatest potential that they can be. And then we have our eyes. Some of us can see and some of us can envision. And envisioning is much, much different. We see a building. Some people might walk by and see a building. Dr. Van Hook, in her stage in the past, she saw, she envisioned something different. The planning committee, the LEAP committee, they envisioned something different. The students that participated in the, the, the putting together this building, the architects, they envisioned what could be, the feedback forms. There was a certain way of like, I want to be on this campus, and there's a certain vibe that I want to have. Vision. We all had somebody in our lives that envisioned us to be something. And sometimes they reminded us differently. You're better than that. They envision you to be something that you're not acting on your potential. Or you can do this. I see this for you. We're all visionaries. I want us to tap into our visionary senses. We envision what the potential and the opportunities this could be. I think this is beyond inclusion. A lot of folks talk equity. College of the Canyons is saying, no, 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 today we are walking equity. We are practicing. We are demonstrating. We are showcasing to the world what it means for our students to be. We talk about having a student-centered campus. No, no, we are going to show you what it means for our students to be centered, literally, on our campus, physically and metaphorically. We are going to show you how we appreciate and value all cultures, all of our students, it being explicitly inclusive. Because when you talk about DEIA work, there's an inverse. The lack of diversity forces us to have diversity initiatives. The lack of, in the lack of inclusion means there was exclusionary practices. And education, my dear brothers and sisters, was the ground zero of that. Brown versus Board, Plessy v. Ferguson. This was a place where literally folks two generations ago were not able to attend. We have people walking on this campus that their great grandparents or their grandparents were told it was illegal for them to be literate, to read and write. And now we're saying, no, 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 no. Not only are we not allowing that to happen, we are going to embrace you. We're going to affirm you. We're going to acknowledge you. We're going to accept you. We're going to uplift you. You belong here. You have a right to be literate. You have a right to be educated. And so we're looking at exclusionary practices and doing reparations in that and creating explicit inclusionary practices. So College of the Canyons, is doing the historical justice work that this nation continues to fail at explicitly. So give yourselves the, the Board of Trustees and the folks that are participating in the bond measures and everyone, give yourselves a round of applause for that. You are literally taking concrete measures to create historical transformation. And that is something you cannot take lightly. And so I leave you with this. I leave you with the fact that one day, generations from now, folks will ask, you know, how did this building come up? And you can say, in your, in your sleep, that you entered this world and you left it much better than when you came into it. Think about it, when we all came into this world, we're all happy. I mean, we're, everyone around us is happy, screaming, oh my God, this cute little baby, you know, he came out. 
and you were crying, like, ah, all babies cry, right? So there's one kid in Brazil, I wish I had the PowerPoints, one kid in Brazil came out, he was like not happy at all, he was like, who took me out of my mama's womb? I come from my mama's womb. But everyone around you is happy, and you're crying. And you want to leave this world, your legacy, the opposite way. That you're laughing, that you're smiling, that you're happy. Because you have made an impactful, transformative change and left a legacy of equity work for generations to come. And everyone around you will be sad. That is what I hope we walk away with today. That we leave this world much better than we came into it. So from the bottom of my heart, I want to thank you all on behalf of the Challenger's office, on behalf of my colleague, Dr. Cydia Martinez, for continuing to be a model of excellence, continuing to practice and be practitioners and not just preach diversity, equity, inclusion, and anti-racism work, to continue to be a model of transformative work for all of our communities. And we see you, Sawabona. When that request came, it was not anything but a chicken wing. <laughs> Driving up the San Diego freeway, flying in from Sacramento as Dr. Martinez, we came out like we got to represent and show up. Because you have continuously demonstrated this work. So again, please enjoy the center. Continue to preach excellence. Continue to be brilliant. Continue to be a beacon of hope and light and optimism in the hallway of hope for our students. And I don't want to take too much time because the sun's coming around the corner. And we're going to start sweating a bit. But thank you again. I want you to turn it over to Dr. Jasmine Rodgers. Thank you. Oh, Dr. Bull, it's hard to follow you. You you know how to inspire a crowd, so thank you so much. And uh, Cece was over there making fun of me because I did take notes. Yes, I did. You're okay. not listening. <laughs> I was listening and taking notes. All right, Sierra Asbury, are you ready? Or no, Cece? Go after or Cece, as we may know her at COC, at College of the Kenyans. Cece is one of our, our students, our longtime college assistant in our intercultural center. She's the youngest of six siblings and the first to go to college in her family. Cece is energetic, loving, sports obsessed, <laughs> music trivia loving, a dog mom with a passion for fashion. She is always willing to help someone in need and shows our students that by doing her best and allowing them to be their authentic selves. She believes she would not be where she is today if not for her family, her friends, and her community. Cece holds three degrees and is currently working on her fourth, all at the age of just 24, a true testament to her commitment to understanding people and cultures. She hopes to finish her business degree here at COC and go on to open a nonprofit organization to help inner city youth achieve their dreams, which will be a love letter to her community when she does that. Please welcome Cece to the podium. Thank You're good. I got you. Thank you. I appreciate you. <laughs> wow. How you make me come up out there, Dr. Bull and the Piero and Van Hook? Oh, wow. Well, I'm going to do a little bit of what he did and this. Um, so welcome to College of the Canyons. My name is Ciara Asbury, or Cece, as most of you know me. I'm a current business student and an inclusion, diversity, equity, accessibility, and anti-racism, or IDEA college assistant here at COC. I've worked at part of the Intercultural Center um, team since 2020. Today we celebrate the grand opening of our new permanent Intercultural Center. And we are so thankful for so many of you who have been with us every step of the way so that this day could finally come. I want to begin by sharing that I almost left COC in 2020. And not because I didn't feel I wasn't getting a good education, but because I didn't see myself in the school. Our society was going through racial injustice and a pandemic and I had lost all hope. Our society, oh, not me saying that again. That was until <laughs> I had an English professor by the name of Angelie Francois. And for the first time in many years of education, I saw a woman, a black woman at that, teaching. I saw myself in her. She talked with me about how COC was developing the Intercultural Center, something not many institutions were doing at the time, and making progress for better representation and equity in education. 
From that moment on, the rest was history, and I became a better student, ally, and advocate for others. The center allowed for me to start getting more involved, using our resources, and sharing them with other students. I am now an active member of our Black Student Alliance and Ojima Scholars Program. Shout out Anthony, um, and John, and Jennifer Thompson. Our IE Squared Committee and Equity Minded Practitioners Committee. All of these committees have led me to meet some wonderful people. To name a couple, I was able to meet Jasmine Rice, our Vice President of Student Services, who has always made time to meet with students and ensure their time at COC is enjoyable and they are growing into better versions of themselves. It's also where you get to meet professors like Pamela William Pius in sociology, who teaches her students to question societal norms and always stand up for what is right. And that love is always the answer. Finally, I want to say thank you to my bosses, Diane Fierro and Flavio Medina Martin, and my wonderful coworkers, Brandon Ashford. Uh, I don't know if Ryan's here, but shout out Ryan. <laughs> uh, who let my creativity run free when it comes to the creation of flyers and marketing within the center and have trust in me which allows for me to make connections with our students. There's so many more I would like to thank, but then we'd be here all day, and we don't want that sun out here. <laughs> I bring these individuals up not only because I want to shed light and give applause to the amazing work they do every day, but it's because of these people I have found my closest friends, mentors, allies, and community, and they're my foundation for success. It's also just really cool like, that you can go to Jasmine's office and talk to her. <laughs> All of those resources I spoke about earlier actually allowed me to help develop and see the ICC come into what it is now. I'm excited to share a few moments with you and share what the Intercultural Center means to me and our students on campus. As Diane Fierro stated earlier, this will serve as home to our 10 alliances, group workshops, open study space, and a safe space on campus for all students. The center is also a COC hotspot for cultural celebrations such as, such as jazz ensembles during Black History Month or discussing women in art during Women's History Month. Through this space, we will not only see diversity of cultures and interests, but diversity of thought. I am so blessed to work in a space where students can come and know they see themselves in the staff. I can't tell you how rewarding it is to see students' faces light up when you remember their name or their preferred pronouns, or see an event that they gave us the inspiration to have, such as our annual Pride Fair. Students often remind me that one of the reasons they came to COC is because we have a space for students to be authentically themselves. This space is an embodiment of College of the Canyon's progress towards greater inclusion, diversity, equity, accessibility, and anti-racism. And there is simply nothing like dedicating a beautiful new space like this to drive that home. On behalf of College of the Canyons and all our inspiring students, I would like to thank each of you for taking time out of your busy schedules to be here with us today. Thank you. Now, I would like to invite some of our representatives to come to the stage. Um, first, Congressman Garcia's office couldn't be here today, but he presented a certificate to us last week for the opening of the ICC. Chris Huff from the, uh, Senator Wilk's office, Scott Wilk's office, representing Assemblywoman Pilar Schiavo, or Andrea Rosenthal and Andrew Tabon, and Isabel Yarlian from Supervisor Catherine Barger's office. If you would all come forward. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm honored to be here on behalf of State Senator Scott Wilk. You know, as a former trustee and a lover of everything COC, he's really proud of, of Chancellor Van Hook, the trustees, and especially the LEAP team and their mentor for the vision. And you know, it takes an idea and then you create that vision and then you create the Intercultural Center at College of the Canyons. It's a beautiful space where students can come, where it's inclusive and safe, and they can feel that way, and they can learn, they can be inspired, they can sit and just take in the day. It's a beautiful space, and thank you for this. We have certificates we can leave them here, or do you want to present them? To you, Diane? Yes, <laughs> to Diane. Just to Diane. Okay. Which one? <laughs> Diane <laughs> and Diane? No, Diane. <laughs> Come on, Diane. <laughs> Who are we? Oh, wait, we're, we're going. There's a couple. Okay. Oh, are there? <laughs> Thank 
There you go. You Appreciate it. You know, Cece, you said that you were nervous because you had to follow Dr. Bull. I have to follow Dr. Van Hook, Dr. Fierro, Dr. Bull, and you, and the Senate. So it's kind of a little sad moment right now. Um, so I, we actually have our district director, Andrew Rosenthal, here. And um, because both of us in our office were trying to decide who would, who would go, because we both oversee education, I oversee Santa Clarita, and she's, she's the head honcho. Um, and I think this is just such an important moment for us. I know as a former uh, student of the College of the Canyons, when we got this invitation, it was exciting. And I think one of the most important things is our office and the Assemblywoman both recognize how, in how incredibly important diversity and inclusion and equity is. And in a time of having access to so many negative things at our fingertips, I think it is such a beautiful idea and location to have where a student can now just go in and feel acceptance, feel inclusivity, and understanding there's a new culture on campus. It was great when I was here, but I know it's only getting better. So on behalf of Assemblywoman Flora Schiava, we'd like to thank the College of the Canyons for bringing this to, to fruition. Hi everyone, uh, very happy to be here today on behalf of the supervisor. She would have loved to be here. She was actually here last week celebrating the Honorable Dr. Diane Van Hook. Um, I mean, what an incredible celebration today. You know, when young kids are at that age when they're starting college and they're in a, I don't want to say vulnerable, but a, a, a difficult spot where they're just becoming themselves, figuring their lives out, figuring out who they are, it's so important to have resources like this for them so they can fit in and feel welcome. So, and it, it's just clear how much work was put into this and it's, it's just amazing. So I, I'm gonna keep it short and sweet. Thank you all so much for all the work you guys have put into this. Um, and that's it and I'd love to welcome up Diane. Now the moment we've all been waiting for. It is time to cut the ribbon. Dr. Fierro, Dr. Van Hook, if you would do the honors. Great. I hope it works. <laughs>